Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to Python tutorial 4 of the course Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. In this tutorial, Python tutorial, we will learn uh, how to represent a matrix in Python programming and then subsequently how to calculate um, uh, eigenvalues and eigenvector corresponding to that matrix. Uh, with the help of this tutorial, we will be able to learn how to uh, numerically calculate uh, stationary states of a uh, quantum system, stationary state wave function and stationary state energies of a, uh, for a uh, uh, quantum system. Uh, technically, we are actually uh, exploring uh, the, we will be exploring the uh, eigen vectors and eigen uh, values associated with a particular Hamiltonian. So, we are solving time independent Schrodinger equation. So, we will uh, take a look at it with what is the procedure to represent uh, uh, a matrix in, in Python programming. Uh, in, in module 4 of this course, we have already realized that mathematical language of quantum mechanics is linear algebra that we have already realized. And in addition to that, in the same module uh, where we have shown the connection between the quantum mechanics and linear algebra, we have presented the grid representation of the wave function. So, we, we, we said that the entire space can be divided into uh, equally spaced grid and the wave function will be represented as, uh, as a discretized um, function on this grid like this. So, within this grid representation and using finite difference method and uh, within the boundary condition, we have to use the boundary condition. Boundary condition it means that um, of the wave function value would be 0 at these boundaries, boundaries of the, the grid. So, where the grid will be terminated in uh, theoretically the wave function uh, uh, should be uh, ex extending from minus infinity to plus infinity, but we cannot take such a infinite boundary uh, grid in computation. So, we make it a finite boundary assuming that at the boundary the wave function takes 0 values. So, we use this boundary condition then finite difference method for the derivative and the discretized wave function. Then what we get is that this is the kinetic energy operator of the uh, kinetic energy part of the Hamiltonian. That kinetic energy part of the Hamiltonian can be expressed in terms of a matrix form like this. This is a tri-diagonal matrix that is that, that we have already seen it. And this delta x is the difference between the grid points. This is the adjacent grid points and h cut m comes spontaneously directly from the uh, the definition of the kinetic energy operator. On the other hand, the potential energy part what we have seen that it, it, it construct the, uh, it, it can also be represented in the matrix form and it gives me the diagonal matrix. So, potential energy is a diagonal matrix 
kinetic energy is a tridiagonal matrix and if we add them together we get the total Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is nothing but the potential part and the kinetic energy part that we have seen. So, if I have the Hamiltonian and uh, uh, the, and that can be represented in terms of a matrix form, then we can immediately get the eigenvalue and eigenvector from that matrix. So, we have also realized in the same module, module 4 of this course, uh, where we have uh, shown the connection between linear algebra and quantum mechanics, we have also realized that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a quantum system can be easily obtained by diagonalizing the Hamiltonian matrix. So, I have shown how to get the Hamiltonian matrix. Hamiltonian matrix will be obtained from adding these two uh, matrices. Once we get this total Hamiltonian matrix in the grid representation, we are following the grid representation which is nothing but uh, pseudo spectral uh, uh, representation of the wave function and uh, and so once we get the Hamiltonian matrix then we can diagonalize the Hamiltonian matrix to obtain the eigenvalue and eigenvectors and eigenvalues and eigenvectors are the spectrum of the quantum system. So, if it is a one dimensional box problem then I have this this is ground state, then excited state and then all the states can be explored and each state are actually corresponding to eigenvector and eigenvalues uh, of the particular Hamiltonian representing the quantum system. So, we get the entire spectrum or we get the stationary states of the quantum system. That is why diagonalization process is is very important in, in quantum mechanics. And how do we diagonalize it? In module 4 we have shown that diagonalization of a matrix, um, let us say I have a matrix A. So, in general uh, operator is shown like this way with a hat on it and matrix is with the double line. So, if I have a matrix A like Hamiltonian matrix then I can perform a linear transformation like this with the help of this unitary operator. This unitary operator has to be found and if we perform this then what will happen? The role of this unitary operator is that it transforms the matrix into a new diagonal form. This is a diagonal form of the matrix in which the diagonal elements represent the eigenvalues of the matrix A and columns of the matrix U represents the eigenvector of the matrix A. So, all eigenvectors will be um, uh, uh, clubbed inside this unitary matrix U and corresponding eigenvalues or eigenstate energies will be given in this diagonal matrix which is lambda. So, all information will be just clubbed together, arranged together uh, in, in these two matrices. And if we perform this unitary matrix, what is the origin of this unitary matrix? We have studied already. So, if we perform this unitary uh, trans transformation, linear transformation, then we get this diagonal form, uh, diagonalize the matrix and we get eigenvalues and eigenvectors. As an example, we have shown that we took a matrix A like this 2, 1, this was the exercise, exercise we have uh, done already 1, 2. This was the let us say as an example we took it, uh, this was the matrix and uh, 2 by 2 matrix and for this matrix in order to diagonalize this matrix we actually got this um, operate uh, this matrix U matrix unitary matrix as 1 by square root minus 1 by square root, 1 by square root minus 1 by uh, square root. So, this this was the unitary matrix. So, so if we if we diagonalize it immediately this lambda 
we get as 1 0 0 3. So, one of the Eigen values would be 1, another Eigen value of would be 3 and corresponding Eigen vectors are 1 by square root this column and another Eigen vector would be this column. So, this is the way we get that and um, we have analytically shown how to get that, but in this tutorial we will check it numerically using Python programming. In general, the data structure which is used to present a mathematical matrix in computer programming is called an array. So, in order to represent this matrix in computer programming, we need to use th this matrix if we want to represent, then we need to use an array, we need to um, put them in array. So, this is the uh, structure we will use array structure to um, represent a matrix. An array can be n dimensional, but two dimensional array is called a matrix and a one dimensional array called a vector. So, this these are uh, if, if we represent each column then this is going to be a vector each column and two dimensional array uh, which is n by n matrix we are presenting here is this this 2 by 2 matrix. So, it is just two, two dimensional array uh, is called the matrix. Python does not have any intrinsic or built in functionality to deal with arrays. So, Python cannot be directly used, it is we have what we have to use, we have to use its sub module that is called scipy which is um, uh, scientific uh, which is prepared which is um, uh, built uh, to, to, to perform scientific computation with Python. So, we have to use that sub module uh, to deal with the array and different numerical uh, uh, linear algebra uh, techniques or, or routines we have to use uh, from, uh, from the functionalities uh, of scipy. So, we will we have to so to, 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 to write down to represent this matrix in python we have to import scipy and then represent in terms of array and remaining uh, eigenvalue problem solving for the to, to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we have to use this scipy dot linear algebra sub module, which is expressed as scipy dot lin elg. So, this sub module will be used to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. All features of scipy linear algebra sub module. Um, uh, one can actually look up the features in the scipy documentation um, and um, all the routines are available in the scipy linear algebra uh, sub module. Um, this scipy dot linear algebra sub module is, is optimized linear algebra routine um, than numpy uh, linear algebra sub module that is why we are not using numpy uh, module here, we will just keep using this scipy uh, sub module of python. And uh, one more information can be useful to note down here is that uh, the linear algebra sub module of scipy has a direct interface with the Fortran uh, LAPAC library which is very efficient and faster. Uh, for and most optimized linear algebra package developed in Fortran for several decades. So, that has an interface and that is why it is more efficient. So, we will we'll use this linear algebra sub module of scipy to represent the matrix and to perform this um, uh, to, to calculate this eigenvalue and eigenvectors. So, how to find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors? First, we have to represent the matrix. So, there are several approaches available currently uh, in a scipy linear algebra sub module to find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a square matrix. However, here we will follow these steps. There are many other ways you one can do that, but we will we'll, we'll consistently use this step to, to represent a 
matrix and then find out the eigenvalue eigenvectors of that matrix. So, what, what are the steps we are going to follow? First, we have to create an n by n square null matrix. This is something which you should remember. The first will create the null matrix. Null matrix is the matrix uh, where we have all elements 0. So, this is I am writing 3 by 3 matrix where all elements are 0. So, we will prepare the null matrix first. So, we will prepare the null array first of the same dimension 3 by 3. Then we will replace or reassign the elements by desired value to create the final matrix. So, if I have to create this matrix let us say 2, 1, 1, 2 this is the matrix we have to create. So, then first we have to do a 2 by 2 null matrix. We will prepare the null matrix first 2 by 2 and then we will replace the each element value. So, we will we'll instruct the uh, program to replace the individual element like this way after creating the null matrix 1 and then this is going to be 2. And then once we have constructed the desired matrix we can find out the eigenvalue and eigenvectors by simply this functionality EIG functionality. What we do in EIG functionality um, we we can just simply write down EIG within bracket if I name this matrix to be A the array to be A then I will get this. So, E comma V this is the energy and the Eigen vector, eigen values and eigen vectors will be given within this construct. It is a very simple way to do. Um, in the background linear algebra sub uh, package or sub module of scipy will be performing all the um, uh, numerical task for me and then it will give me finally this values and the vectors using this functionality. It is very simple to do. So, we will take a look at it how to um, uh, represent it. We will go back to the laptop right now and we will try to construct the, uh, the, the matrix. So, first as I have mentioned I have to first construct the null matrix and to construct the null matrix what we have to do is that um, from scipy we will import one functionality called zeros. So, the zeros will be uh, producing the array with the with every element will be 0 and then I will name A as zeros within bracket now I have to define the matrix dimension. I want to perform matrix 2 by 2. So, 2 comma 2 is my matrix dimension. So, what it does it immediately um, creates. So, if I go back to the slide. So, it, it, it constructs 2 by 2 null matrix first. So, 2 by 2 null matrix it means that this zeros will give me 0 0 0 0 that is exactly what it is going to create. So, we will prove that it is what uh, is going to create. I will go back to the laptop and uh, I will now print this A. So, I have created an null matrix and I will write down some instructions here which will be helpful. Uh, with a hash character A 2 by 2 null matrix is constructed because the final matrix which I am going to create is going to be 2 by 2 and here I will write down zeros functionality is imported from scipy sub 
as high pi module. And I save that with a name test one dot py. It is already saved. And now I would like to run the program. If I run the program, what we see here is that this is the way Python will show the uh, the matrix or the array. In in Python programming, we'll call it array. But when in mathematical language, it is the matrix. So in, in computer language, we do not call it matrix. So what we are seeing here is that we can create, if we go back to the uh, slide right now, we can create this 0, 0, 0, 0 matrix uh, very easily with the help of this zeros functionality. In the zeros functionality, remember that we are using a comma here to separate the, to, uh, to, to show the dimension and we have double bracket here, one bracket for the zeros and another bracket for the, uh, the, to show the dimension of the matrix. So, these are the two things which you should remember, we should not get confused by um, the, the, the notation. An array data structure can be created using this built-in functionality of SciPy and um, uh, Python's module SciPy has several functionalities to define an array of any dimension. For an example, these zeros, these zeros more specifically the actual functionality is like this zeros then within bracket n comma n then comma d type that is called data type. This is the actual functionality where we have not used this this option data type option because this data type option d, d type option is optional and that is why we have not used it. But if we use that then it is actually defining what kind of data type I need is a floating data type or integer data type we can define it. But I am not using it and that is why because it is an optional uh, functionality I am not using it here. Next what we will do now or according to the steps we have given once we have created the null matrix of the same dimension. So, this is the um, matrix we would like to first represent and then find out its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Next step would be to replace the elements to construct the target matrix. So, we have con constructed the null matrix first and then we have to replace it. For the replacement when A represents, if A represents a n by n array, if A representing n by n array, then A this construct A i comma j, this construct represents the i th uh, the the element of ith row and jth column of that array. So, uh, if it is so then one can one can uh, take some examples let us say and these are indices and we know that indices will start from 0 it will start from 0 then 1 then 2 like this way it will go. So, a 0 0 this index uh, 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 this construct will give me uh, it will return the element in the first row and first column which means first row first column element is this one. So, that one I am going to assign. Then if I write down A 1 2 it means it is first row and second column. So, this is the first row and second column. So, this is going to be this one and so on. 
this is just the way we are going to assign. So, if we look at this, it is very simple to do and similar, similar assignment we have used for the list um, indexing. We have already seen that the Python's built-in list indexing is similar kind, but here we have to just show the entire dimension for, for, for this because it is a two dimensional. So, we have to give each element, uh, each index corresponding to that particular element. So, what we are doing here is, here is that first we have constructed the 0 matrix, null matrix and then individual element are reassigned now. So, A00 is corresponding to the first row, first column, A01 is the first row and uh, sorry, this is this is A12, it means it is going to be um, second row and third column. Zero, 00 is the first row, first column, 1, 2 is the second row and third column. So, similarly, A01 now it is going to be first row, second column. So, that is going to be uh, first row and second column, column is here. So, it is going to be here, this one. Then 1, 0, second row, first column, this one. And A11 one, one is going to be uh, second row, second column, this value. And that is the way we have assigned, we are assigning, reassigning it. And if we print it, we will be able to see what we have assigned. So, let us go back to the laptop and uh, find out how to do that. So, I am going to now assign um, individual values. Uh, I am going to assign it like this way. I have created the 0 null matrix and then A, then 0 comma 0 is going to be now 1 uh, sorry 2 then I have uh, 0 1 is going to be 1 then 1 0 this is going to be 1 and then 1 1 is going to be 2 and if I print a, I will be able to uh, see what uh, I have constructed. What I have constructed is 2, 1, 1, 2. That is the matrix which we have constructed. So, I will go back to the slide. So, I have constructed now this, this entire matrix and the way Python shows it with, with the help of this array is this matrix will be um, represented in Python with the help of this double brackets. And we, we have constructed uh, the, uh, the, uh, the matrix right now. Uh, on this note, I will just mention one thing that if I write down A this colon then comma j or if I write down a i comma this colon it means that the this will return this will return me the entire jth column. So, if it is uh, let us say 0, then I will get back the entire column and the entire column is going to be now 2, 1. Similarly, if this is, this is going to give me entire row and if it is 0 comma colon, it means that I am going to get back the entire row and that is going to be 2, 1 the first row and this is first column because 0 index is indicating the first column. So, uh, th these are the ways one can um, uh, collect the particular 
uh, entire row and entire column uh, of a of a matrix which has been represented in the python already so we'll move on and we'll go to the third step which is very important step finding the eigen values and eigen vectors of that uh, created uh, matrix so as we see that from here to here is now known i have created the matrix then after that i'm giving a name the first one is the eigen value second one is the eigen vector and if i give the name with a separate separated by a comma then it calculates the eigen value eigen vector of the matrix which has been formed here a matrix has been constructed with the help of this eig uh, bracket construct so we'll print then e and v and we'll see how they are printing so we have already constructed we'll go back to the laptop right now and we have already constructed a now we will do one thing i do not need to print it again because i know what i have created here constructed here i'll just go ahead with this e comma v one can change the name and make it um, um, anything i gain uh, values eigen values and eigen it one can name it eigen vector so any 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 name is possible but they both has to be separated by comma and the first one has to be eigen value and the second one has to be eigen vector then this construct eig a it will this construct eig within bracket a this construct is indicating that python has to explore um, find out the eigen value and eigen vectors but before we do so i have to import this feature from scipy linear algebra submodule it is not available with scipy directly it is available with scipy linear algebra submodule because it is a uh, linear algebra um, uh, routine which will be following so it is going to be scipy dot linear alg i'm going to import and then i'm going to print e and v print e print v do not use capital letter in print because python will not be able to recognize it is sensitive to them um, uh, to the um, the that to 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 the letters so now i'll run this program so if i run the program what i see is that um, the first it's printing two different arrays it's printing two different arrays the first array is this one and the second one is printing like this so e the the eigen values are given um, in a uh, in an array the first eigen value i'll go back to the uh, slide the first eigen value is given by this this is j is the uh, the complex number where what we express as i in mathematics python will express as j so and zero multiplied by j means it is a real number it is actually showing by default it is showing in the complex form so the first value eigen value is going to be 3 which means that e1 is going to be 3 and e2 another eigen value is going to be 1 this is going to be 1 so this is the two eigen values we get and this is exactly we have found analytically when we did this analytical solution we have found it that this matrix has two different eigen values one is 3 and another one was 1 and we have discussed these things in module 4 of this course already so numerically we are finding the same results and corresponding to the eigen values what we have found we have uh, we are seeing that this eigen vector is uh, presented in terms of uh, in, in the again array form this is another array which has been given so these vectors are uh, given in the array and um, and what it does actually uh, this this construct e comma v equals eig a this construct 
computes the eigenvalues and normalized it gives me normalized right eigen vectors it gives me right normalized right eigen vectors so right eigen vectors what does it mean i have uh, an operator acting on psi i get eigen value and multiplied by the eigen function the eigen vector so this is called right eigen vector another expression i can have where a is acting from the from the right this can also give me an eigen value equation when it does that then this is called left eigen vector so by default if i don't mention anything so so actual construct of this um, evaluating eigen values is following this is going to be this should be eig then name of the matrix then we have to write left equals false and right equals true that we have to write down false or true so generally uh, by default it's taking right as true if i need to get specifically left eigen vector then i have to write down left equals true then only i'll be able, i'll be able to get that so if i don't mention anything by default it's taking giving me the right eigen vector and it is normalized form so normalized form and um, what we have got here is the normalized um, this this is this is one um, vector another vector is this one so there are two eigen vectors we have which is clubbed together in this array so now um, this uh, this this construct actually giving me normalized right right eigen vectors and one can access the values of the eigen vectors like this because it is it is in array and one can also access uh, the normalized right eigen vectors in the matrix form in which jth column correspond to correspond corresponds to the normalized right eigen vector associated with jth eigen value so if the jth eigen value if, 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 if the jth eigen value is this one then to get the eigen vector so this is the eigen value and corresponding eigen vector is going to be it has to be represented like this way colon comma j so actually i am taking the column so this particular column is associated with this eigen value and this particular column is associated with this eigen value this is the way they are representing so if i need to pick up the eigen vector corresponding to a particular eigen value then i have to pick up following this way v has all the information hidden i have to just pull up the particular column corresponding to that particular eigen um, eigen uh, eigen value we will now move on 
and um, we will check what we have said right now um, particularly. So, we have already calculated um, um, these things. So, what we will do? We will continue this session in the next class.